Hi, it's Rob Bryanton back here with the Imagining the Tenth Dimension uh, video log, and today we are talking to Kevin Gurebrand, the author of uh, Everything Forever, Learning to See Timelessness, one of my favorite books, and uh, a book that really opened my eyes to how important the aspects of grouping and symmetry are to the way that our reality is created. Kevin, welcome to the show. Hi, Rob. Good to be here. So, uh, for me, when we were when I was first introduced to your ideas, the thing that was really the the boing moment for me was when <laughs> you got to the the idea that uh, at the uh, the outside edges of our reality, everything unfolds back into zero. And uh, when I was creating the graphic for my uh, project, I I had uh, intuitively understood that, but I hadn't really seen all the ramifications of it that you introduced me to. Uh, the idea uh, in the, the helix graphic that's associated with this project, uh, having the, the zero at the bottom and the ten both on a, a line that connects the, the two of them together was was deliberately placed there because that was that was what I was seeing. But... What you introduced me to was the idea that the end of our universe unfolds back into that same zero again, uh, uh, an unfolded symmetry. And uh, the idea that there is symmetry and grouping happening throughout our reality is, is one of the ideas that, uh, that you really so eloquently introduced us to. And uh, Do you want to talk a little bit about that today? Well, it's, it's interesting the way we sort of reject the notion that... Um, the idea, the idea of enfoldment, the way that um, things can, in a sense, be um, enfolded into something and, and invisible to us and there, but, but we just can't see them. Um, with, uh, with symmetry order, I mean, we're actually accustomed to, to those kind of uh, concepts with, in certain ways. For example, light, we, um, we, we appreciate that white light contains all the primary colors and the tertiary colors and that they're somehow in there. But we don't really actually think of white light as, as full, as, as, if, as if the colors are, are literally inside there creating the white light. And, and, and that's the concept in the book. You know, that's, that's probably the, the key concept that, I, that I'm trying to explain is that what appears to us to be nothing, to have no qualities, can in, can in a sense be an enfolded order uh, in the same way I explained in the book using uh, uh, everything in my refrigerator. <laughs> if I take it all out and I, I throw it in the, in, the, in the pot and cook it for hours and hours and hours and I stir the pot and add a little bit of water and eventually all those things uh, combine together into one. They combine in together into a mush, but it's one, and and uh, that's the way symmetry order is. Um, even though we don't um, visibly recognize that something is is full, uh, it's it's actually a feature of nature. It's a very basic phenomenon in reality, and um, it's something that we don't today recognize. In science, science has not learned yet to appreciate the notion that what what appears to us as nothing, something uniform, some, something such as space, can be full rather than empty. We are still thinking in 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 the the notion that empty space is nothing or empty, and we see the world as all above or greater than or more than that nothingness, and that's how we all it's from 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 birth, that's how we all learn to perceive the world around us, and and so that it really connects back to the question of of why the universe seems so miraculous and and why it seems so impossible to exist. Because how can there be all this matter and somethingness in contrast to the nothingness that is more fundamental and that's in the sense that that uh, everything has somehow arisen above. Uh, and, and that is a whole me mental, it's a whole mindset. And when you switch, when you begin, you know, as you have uh, with, with both your, your writing and, and uh, uh, apparently from, from reading my ideas, is that you, you can start to suddenly recognize 
that there's this whole other way of seeing the world to where you can recognize that that everything is less than everything that that everything is in a sense a fragment of this one great whole and and it makes so much sense in terms of of the many worlds theory in quantum theory because uh, we're accustomed in, in, in science to, to seeing that the, uh, the quantum probability wave as containing all these other possibilities. And then we say, well, but then there's this, this one real one that comes out of the, that probability wave, and that's the one we experience, and that's the real world, and that's only physical reality. Well, in this, in this mindset, you switch then and you realize that uh, everything is enfolded into that that probability wave actually represents the whole, and 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 we are just one fragment within that whole. And so you're seeing things as as less than the whole, rather than everything as more than nothing. Exactly. Now, one of the one of the uh, ideas that I talked about and that I have a song about is the idea that the Big Bang is an illusion. Uh, after reading your book, I also rewrote one of my songs. I had a song uh, uh, called Big Bang to Entropy, uh, which uh, two years ago uh, was what I had been taught and most of science continues to teach is that the end of our universe is entropy. And uh, the chorus of my, my song was Big Bang to Entropy, and it repeated three times. Uh, the chorus of the song now, I'm still acknowledging entropy as, as something that people uh, think of as the ending, so I say it once, but the song now goes, Big Bang to Entropy, Big Bang to Symmetry, Big Bang to Everything, so that uh, it starts to Ooh, acknowledge like the, the idea that, uh, that there is something in our reality outside the Big Bang, outside the end of our universe, and that's that unfolded symmetry that you're talking about. So uh, yeah, it's sort of a switch on on the direction. I mean, it, and it's classical as far as relates exactly to what I was talking about. Um, that that two ways of seeing things because uh, we see, you know, in science and, and and typically our our most casual way of looking at the Big Bang is to think of the past as as more and more dense and more and more the the um, creation in the sense the the origin of somethingness and and then as we move into the future, scientists believe the universe is, is, is becoming disordered and dying, and all the usable energy is being used up, and so we're moving towards, in a sense, nothingness, and, and the universe is just dying, and eventually it'll, there won't be any substance or reality or, or physical uh, material. And, and, and so, again, we're seeing like, like uh, the world is... Um, more than nothing and and when you when you make the switch then you can see that actually the big bang is the the past is is less than where we're moving towards and we're actually the universe is moving into and becoming rather than dissolving and disintegrating right and and the the idea then that uh, that science has taught us that there's this hopelessness at the end of our universe uh, becomes turned on its head. It's actually uh, quite a wonderful thing that we're heading towards when you think about it in these terms. It's it's horrible. It's it's horrible the way. I mean, it's 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 a consequence of not understanding the universe, of not understanding the two kinds of order, of just seeing the universe through a paradigm of order and disorder, and 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 from that perspective, and it's natural. And you know, you can't expect. Uh, people, you know, our history to have understood immediately the whole universe and everything there is to know. And so, yeah, we have to go through these stages. And and uh, so, yeah, but we are, you do, when you appreciate the two kinds of order and recognize that the universe is not order becoming disorder, but is the order of the past, the Big Bang, which is imbalance or, or uh in a sense, a lesser kind of order, and the universe is flowing and moving towards, evolving towards symmetry order or the whole and becoming the everything. And um, so in a sense, we're moving from half to the whole. And when you understand that, it um, looking back on the way we've understood the universe in the past as dying, as as uh, disintegrating, um, it's 
like coming out of the dark. It's uh, it's an amazing um, step. So, uh, and the, and the interesting thing about this is is what we're talking about really isn't that far away from from what some scientists are saying. Like I've been quoting Seth Lloyd uh, and his book Programming the Universe, who invites us to think of the Big Bang. Uh, starting from the very first yes-no binary, binary decision, and w- what you're talking about then, the Big Bang being the very first maximum grouping order, is really the same idea, isn't it? Yes, I agree. It is very uh, more to, to look at um, the Big Bang as the beginning of, or the core, the, the most simple expression of, of matter or distinction or form, and... Uh, I mean that's that's correct. The grouping order is the the order of distinction and form and definition. Um, but we need to appreciate the fact that um, grouping order is is an order of imbalance. And in order to for there to be distinction, there has to be uh, this apart from that. And and this apart from that means in, in reality it means positive apart from negative or some. It, it, it involves some sort of symmetry, up, down, uh, right, left. Everything is relative, and 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 in in grouping order, grouping order is is in a sense uh, the side of nature that expresses the distinctions that are possible. And symmetry order is the is the kind of order that erases all those distinctions, and and rather than Erasing them into a nothingness, they they actually are the the distinction is erased, but the the all the parts in a sense are come together and form the whole. So uh, maybe we should just step back for uh, people who are watching this who aren't familiar with the concept of grouping and symmetry, uh, uh, and just talk about exactly what those two orders are. One of the things, uh, one of the examples that uh, is often given for this is if you were to toss a coin a hundred times, you wouldn't just end up with heads, tails, head, tails. You would end up with a mixing of, of heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, heads. And if you were to then zoom in on that, that set, you would find places where there was more grouping and you would find places where there was more symmetry. You would find places where heads happened more times than tails. You would find places which would be a, a grouping order, and you would find places where it did it happen to work out to the 50-50 distribution that you're expecting, heads, tails, heads, tails. So if we're thinking of uh, information equals reality, uh, which if you type uh, those three words into, uh, into Google, you'll find some interesting uh, stuff about that, then... Uh, the fabric of our reality is basically a, a result of a certain amount of grouping that happened at the beginning, which, which selected from all of the possible universes that could exist, the one that we're in right now, and uh, and that is that very first quantum frame is is the maximum grouping order, and we're now moving towards the symmetry order that's going to happen at the other the other end of our universe. Do you think that's a fair way to describe it? Yes, uh, with the coins, in a sense, um, if you flip a hundred coins, you can take and all the all the heads to one side, put all the heads to one side, and that's in a sense one group of all the heads, and then all the tails to the other side, and that's the group of all the tails, and that's the ultimate in 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 a sense grouping order or definition. It's you have two groups, you have two opposite or polar groups. And, and the same is true with positive and negative. All the positives to one side, all the negatives to the other. So grouping order is, in a sense, uh, things separated and divided apart. But then, as everyone knows, if you take positive and negative, and if you combine them together, you create a neutrality. You create a, a unity. And, and then all, now, all of a sudden, all you have is neutral. You don't have those, those positives over here or those negatives over here. Now, it's interesting because, uh, you know, that that example is a good one, especially in, in relate relating it to like for example music. Um, notes can be arranged um, in, in a in an orderly fashion. They can be uh, in in rhythm. There there can be a steady rhythm so that you have uh, in a sense a positive then a then a delay, which is in a sense your 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 uh, negative and then your positive and then your Delay and then you're uh, so you so you can have a steady rhythm, and or you can uh, you can bring all the notes together and make a, a, a rather than a rhythm a repeating uh, 
series, you can have them all together and make one loud sound. And, and that's an example of the way the more you divide all the positives or, and all the negatives apart, the more each becomes more, more pronounced. Um, and that's, in a sense, the Big Bang. The first moment is the ultimate in pronunciation for the universe, for, for reality. It's, uh, it's the ultimate state of all the positives divided apart from all the negatives. And then, and then the Big Bang happens, and that is, in a sense, the collision of the positive and the negative coming together. And, and then the universe, as the universe evolves, it evolves towards the state of being neutral. Uh, the, the, we know the expansion of the universe is, is now accelerating, and, and physicists are beginning to understand that, that the universe is moving towards absolute zero, and, um, and absolute zero is neutrality. It, it is what we think of as empty space. And but the you know once you appreciate grouping and symmetry, then you can realize oh, but the zero isn't actually nothingness or empty space. The the zero is actually the full. It's new, neutral. It's the all the positives combined together with all the negatives. And in terms of universes or like the many worlds theory, um, we're talking about. It's a matter of of, of seeing the whole or, or our universe as a tiny fragment. And so when you ask the question, well how many other worlds are there other than ours? And when you start to imagine all these other inf infinite many worlds, it, when you see the world from, from the bottom up, when you see the distinction and form as above nothingness, then it seems the infinite number of worlds just seems so much. It just seems uh, almost impossible because it's so much. Well, in this perspective, now you're seeing... Our world is just a tiny fragment of the whole, and and here now you can see the many worlds is all the different many, in a sense, slices of the pie, all the different uh, many parts of the whole. So so the whole is you know uh, the the largest um, frame of reference that you have. It's it's the infinite, uh, the timeless infinite whole, and and then you see all the universes is less than that whole, and even the infinite number of many worlds all of a sudden seems, it doesn't seem so great, <laughs> because each each is just in a, a different slice of the pie, and that pie is always whole, and it's always there, and it's always timeless, and always has been and always will be, and and all the different worlds that we, I mean, the world that, that we experience, plus all the other worlds that we recognize as possibilities, equal possibilities to our own, are just slices of that whole pie. Right, and and I guess that's one of the things that I think your project has, has brought to people, and I feel like my project has too, is it's giving people ways to imagine that, that uh, fabric that everything comes from, that part that is outside the system that we're currently in, and it gives us a way to, to think not in terms of, of what came before the Big Bang or what happens after the universe, because that's not really the question. What we're talking about is there is this, this overall fabric that, uh, that is always there. And, uh, and if you want to think of that as quantum fields or if you want to think of that as, as indeterminacy or if you want to think of that as, as uh, zero, the unfolded everything, it's all really different ways of thinking about the same thing, isn't it? Oh, I <laughs> absolutely or God. Uh, it's all all the ways of, of thinking about the same thing. Um, nature, reality, existence, um, the universe, the infinite universe, timelessness. Uh, all the, all those words are referring to the same thing. And it's funny uh, when you think about it, that um, what we have always thought of as nothing and, and this uh zero and, and, and really taken for granted in a sense, uh, it turns out to be <laughs> everything. It's, it, you know, it's always what we've been referring to and, and looking up and going, wow, you know, the, it's a big place and, and, and what's out there. And, and uh, uh, the, you know, all time, all, the whole in a sense includes all life, uh, not just life that's up been on this planet, but all the life that's in infinite worlds. And and, and it is, as hard as it is to imagine, those are all the slices of the pie, and they're all in there, in the whole. And and so um, back again to that, we have such a hard time imagining 
the possibility or seeing the world as uh, seeing in a sense that that balance as being full. And yet, um, you know, we are familiar with certain concepts such as light as containing all the colors. And uh, we can, you know, uh, perceive the world in that way. It's very possible to switch into that perspective and see all the distinction of, of worlds as one great whole. I'm, I'm glad you brought up God because I think that's one of the things that is still uh, uh, re- requiring some people to uh, take another step forward is that what we're talking about here can be viewed from a very scientific viewpoint. It can also be viewed from a very spiritual standpoint. And uh, I think both of us agree that what we're trying to work our way towards here is identifying that both of those are different ways of thinking about the same thing. And uh, the people who say, I don't want to talk about this because it's about God, and people who say, I don't want to talk about this because it's about science, uh, while they're they're certainly welcome to come at this from their own perspective, what we're trying to do here is find the place where all of that meets in the middle. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, I, I certainly I certainly agree. Um, it, it's, I mean, it's it's no uh, coincidence that uh, you know both of us were in a sense with our books and our writing, we're trying to see the big picture and understand. Um, fit in, in a sense, all possibilities into a model. And and my model uh, only uh, more or less looks at the many worlds theory, I mean, or the many worlds that are similar to our own. And um, your model, in a sense, uh, looks at the the every all the possibilities. And 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 um, it, it's it's no coincidence that those two models fit together and uh, tell the same story and it when we we gain a full understanding of reality uh, then it, certainly all the different ways that people have tried to interpret the universe and understand the universe uh, fit into that same system the, the ultimate system does um, include both science and religion or or both science and spirituality. Um, yeah, I, I could go on and on. It's a it's a long subject. Well, I think uh, we should wrap it up today, Gavin. Uh, but uh, this has really been a great discussion. I hope you're going to be able to do this again uh, with me sometime in the future because uh, I think uh, you do bring an awful lot of really great ideas to the table, and uh, and uh, I'm I just feel so fortunate to to have you here as a resource. Thank you. I feel fortunate, uh, Rob, that, um, that there's someone else out there <laughs> that that uh, understands and, and has written about the same kind of things. It's uh, This is a great connection we're making, and, and I hope to have uh, many uh, long conversations in the future. Beautiful. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. And from Imagining the Tenth Dimension, the video blog, this is Rob Bryanton. Bye for now. <laughs>